If it wasn't obvious before that Trudeau and the Liberal government in Canada are following Sharia, we have just had a case that has made it clearer than ever, clearer than anything I've ever seen until now. We had a, a young Canadian um, in Vancouver that was murdered. She was 13 years old and it was an unprovoked murder and she was murdered by a Syrian refugee. All the links to all those stories are in the description, but I'm sure you've heard about this by now. Government of Canada, they are following Sharia. We knew this before because they are bringing in Muslim refugees over any other kind of refugee. So Christian, Yazidi, Jewish, uh, South African farmers. The Muslim refugees are the first ones to get picked to come here over any other kind of refugee. This is part of Sharia. There is, under Islamic law, a lot of uh, parts of the Quran and the Hadith that mention that Muslims are always to give precedent, to be given precedence over non-Muslims. So this is why we have that. We already knew that. And now with the uh, Marissa Shen murder, we are seeing a different kind of Sharia where it's uh, a different part of Sharia where they are actually trying to not mention any wrongdoing by Muslims, but actively over overstating the wrongdoings of or perceived wrongdoings of other people that are non-Muslims. So if you go back in time to last January, there was a, a, a hijab hoax here in uh, somewhere in Toronto. And a young girl walking to school claimed that some Chinese guy, sorry, Asian guy uh, cut her hijab. So first of all, if that actual crime happened, it would have been far less violent and permanent than the Marissa Shen murder, who you, you don't come back from murder, right? It's far more violent what happened to Marissa Shen than what supposedly happened to this young girl, this Muslim girl. Within four hours of this Muslim girl claiming that somebody had cut her hijab, which turns out she cut herself, the school board had already organized a press conference and Justin Trudeau, the Prime Minister of Canada, had already tweeted out four hours later that his heart goes out to the family and blah blah blah. Now, if you come to the current case of Marissa Shen, so in an, an actual brutal murder of a non-Muslim, Trudeau has still not issued a statement. Furthermore, the press, the media here, has done everything they can to you know, negate and bury the fact that this had to do with Islam. And do you know how I know this has to do with Islam? Because a Muslim told me. There was a protest in Vancouver at the hearing for the, uh, the, the murderer from Syria, the Syrian refugee murderer, and a Muslim girl went and threw some coffee at a protester and a reporter. She told me that this had to do with Islam. The protesters were there to protest the murder and to demand answers from the government and to understand why the government hasn't come out and made an, a statement yet. But this Muslim girl actually threw coffee at somebody. That's her telling us this has to do with Islam, right? She's worried about Islam being perceived negatively, so she throws a cup of coffee <laughs> against, against the reporter. Now here, you know, most Muslims in Canada know this, but maybe I have to say this for the newcomers here. If you want us to believe that Islam is peaceful and if you want us to believe that you're here to integrate and be good and not, uh, you know, conduct violent jihad on us, maybe throwing a cup of coffee, a coffee at someone is not the right way to go. But the media who actually caught this on camera made sure not to report on it. They didn't report. So I don't know if you even knew that a Muslim woman threw a cup of coffee at a protester over this. But the mainstream media has, cov uh, has ignored it. The only one that I saw that uh, covered it was, I believe, the Toronto Sun uh, and Spencer Fern Fern Fernando on his website. Aside from that, complete blackout on this whole issue. This is a big deal. It's a big deal that a Muslim woman went and assaulted other people. First of all, Again, Sharia is applied here because nobody's doing any effort to track down who this Muslim wo woman was. No charges will be laid against her. Uh, yet in the hijab hoax, um, also because it was done by a Muslim, no charges were laid against the family of this young girl who lied and had caused a whole bunch of, of anger and grief to the Asian community. No charges were, were laid 
but you can bet if they had found out that for some reason some guy out there went and did cut her hijab, he would be in jail by now. Absolutely guaranteed. There is a blatant double standard being applied here. And unfortunately, Marissa Shen had to pay with her life because of our reckless policies, because of our refusal to acknowledge that Islam has a different agenda here in Canada, because we are refusing to acknowledge and learn about Sharia, because we're refusing to admit that perhaps our government is more interested in serving the interests of Islam and the doctrine, political Islam, than it is of serving the actual rest of the citizens in Canada. Canada has aligned itself with Islam. It is no longer looking after the interests of its own population. And unfortunately, the Marissa Shen case has brought this to light. It has made it completely obvious to even the most, um, you know, uninvolved citizen that there is a very, very blatant double standard in how we treat Muslims and how we treat non-Muslims here in Canada. Now, I also think that if we don't speak up, more of this is going to happen. More Muslim refugees keep coming every year. And if we don't start to question this and really demand answers from our government, request that our government uh, support Canadian values over any of the Islamic values, we will see more of these. We already know in Europe that Muslim refugees are causing a lot of chaos. They're burning cars, they're throwing acid in people's faces, they are raping girls en masse. They are uh, stealing, um, killing other citizens in there, uh, killing tourists. They are causing massive, massive problems. And they are telling the citizens of these European countries that they're, over to they're there to take over. Islam will dominate the world. That's what they say. These are not my words. They're their words. These are the Muslims who are coming to these countries telling us that that's what they want to do. So we have a choice. We can keep burying our, hand, our head in the sand and we're going to see more and more victims at uh, the age of Marissa Shen and even further uh, you know, descend into madness of, of all of this while our government is doing everything to protect Muslims. Or we can speak out about it and learn what Sharia is, learn about Islam, learn about the 1400 history, 1400 year history of Islamic conquests so that we can actually know what we're dealing with when we look at the doctrine of Islam. And again, disclaimer, because I will have a lot of Muslims in the comment section calling me Islamophobe and saying that I don't know anything about the Quran. I am not an Islamophobe. I do not believe it's all Muslims doing this. Very many of the refugees are coming here are very appreciative of the freedoms that they have here. They are working very hard to learn our language and they are working hard to get a job so they can also contribute. Many Muslims are doing that. Not all Muslims. But if we keep ignoring the doctrine of Islam and allowing our government to get away with enforcing Sharia here, our country will be gone soon. It will become an Islamic country.